All right, so let's go ahead and set up a new InDesign document um, so that we can learn about the text or the type tool. Um, so we're going to create a new document and we're going to use letter size. We're going to set the margins to five picas all the way around. Remember if I have the lock clicked, I only have to change it in one place. It's automatically going to change it everywhere else. I'm going to change the bleed to two picas and again I have the lock set so it's changing it all the way around. I'm going to leave the slug at zero because I'm not going to be messing with it. And I am going to set my um, columns to two with a um, with a two pica gutter. Whoops! Actually, make that a three pica. I'm sorry, three pica gutter. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right. So here is our document setup. Remember the red is the bleed, the black is the document size, the purple in here, this is our margins, and then we have our columns and our gutter. Okay. Um, now, let's go ahead and get your type tool. And that's the first one there. Notice that when you click on the type tool, you have options that pop up up here, such as choosing your font, um, and then the font style you have the text size as well as your letting or your the line space in between paragraphs. You have some different text effects such as all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript, underline, strike through. Here we have how you align your text within a paragraph um, or within your text box rather. Here we have different ways of indenting Okay, left indent, first line left indent, a right indent, a last line right indent. Um, here we have space before, here we have a drop cap, space after, and then drop cap one or more characters. So several things up here that you can use. You should also know that you do have um, inside your window you have a, um, a panel for type and tables so you could actually pull up your character and or your paragraph panels um, which gives you some extra options and you could dock it over here and keep it open that way if it's something that you think you whoops may use okay so there's character panel now I'm gonna start off by creating a text box and this text box I actually want to align it here at this top margin and notice as I start dragging it notice that it gives me the width and the height of this text box. So I'm going to drag it all the way over here from the left margin to the right margin which you see that that gives me 40 picas of space and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this down to where the height is pretty close to 6 pica. Ha oops, however if I get my select tool and click on it I can come up here and I can set exactly my height at 6 pica. Now we have different ways that we can put in text. Obviously we can simply double click in this text box and we can type a piece of text. So I am typing the word or words lorem ipsum and I'm going to give it um, since this is a heading that I'm using it for, I'm going to give it a kind of a thick font. Okay, I'm choosing Stone Sans. I'm not sure if you have it on your computer, but just pick something, a wide font. 
and then I'm going to increase the size of it so that it fits in that text box and it looks like notice how the text box is right here the line of it if I go too much bigger than this that P won't be in that text box anymore okay so let me see see the P how it's underneath the text box I actually I don't want that um, only because as we line up the rest of our columns that could mean overlapping text so I'm gonna reduce the font size to 55 and again if your font is different then you might have a different font size so you're gonna have to kinda play with that and then I'm going to center this text inside the text box so this is a title or a heading that I've put on my page okay now we have two columns of text I'm going to put in use my text tool and again just below where this text box ends which as I, I look over here at my rulers you can see how it lines up at, at the rulers on the left hand side I'm gonna whoops it tried to add it to that one I don't want to add it to that one so I need I'm gonna have to go kinda just below it there we go and I'm gonna fill the left column and then I'm gonna make another one and I'm gonna fill the right column and you can see that it does try to um, assist you with lining up the columns however you can select both of them by holding down the shift key and we can use right up here see our alignment tools I can make sure that they are both aligned at the top edge I can make sure that they are both the same size all right so you know how to type in a text box um, you can obviously copy and paste text into a text box um, but we also have the ability to do what's called placing text and um, if you would get from Poland pickup there is a file that you'll need to copy to your folder in schools and it is called what is lorem ipsum okay so that's the file that you need to put in your schools folder please okay so what I'm gonna do is I have this first column selected and I'm gonna go up here to file and place and I'm gonna navigate um, to that folder now please remember I save to my desktop because I don't have a folder in schools you do however which is where you should save it so I went to place I selected the file and notice that the text shows up now in this column at this point in time I can double click in the column and I could do um, a command A to select everything I can see that the um, font is times the font size is 12 point there's 14.4 point of line spacing between there so I could go ahead and edit this if I needed to now I want you to notice that there is a little plus sign at the bottom this plus sign at the bottom means that there is extra text that does not fit in the current text frame it's called overset okay and it has not been flowed into any other frame well remember that we have another text frame right here in this column so I could go here and click on this little plus notice when I click on that plus look what happens to my cursor it actually loads the text that is left over and it's going to allow me to thread it from this frame and now click and it finishes in this frame do you see that um, this makes it easy for you to control where your text goes in your documents so I could select both of my text frames um, 
and I could resize them if I needed to. I can come in here, you can see that there is some, um, what do you call it, uh, headings, subheadings, one, two, three, four subheadings. I could make these subheadings um, a different font style, a different font size, okay? Um, did I, I did bold and italic, I couldn't remember what I did. And apply that to each one of these. And I have one more. Okay. Um, and again, I could go in and select all of the text. Notice that when I double clicked in one and did Command A, it actually selected all of the text um, from both because of the overset text that was there. So that's pretty handy. All right, so now you know that you can type in a text box. You can copy and paste into a text box, obviously, and you can place text from other file types into a text box. Um, I could actually, I'm going to select all this text and I'm going to make everything, oh, it won't let me make everything one size smaller. What if I went ahead and made everything 11 point? Okay, when it does that, now look at this. Okay, so here is one of the subheadings. Well, maybe I don't want a subheading to be all the way down there. So if I resize this, want this first one, notice I'm making it go down. Well, now look, okay, this one is a little bit lower. Now we have two text boxes here that also leaves us with less space here. So now we have actually room for um, a graphic if we wanted. I also have room to do other things to this if I needed to. So I'm going to Command Z because I'm going to let this go back to how it was originally just so that you can see it. And let's go ahead and save this in your folder in schools. We're going to do save as. Notice the file type is called INDD, that's the InDesign document. Again, you're saving in schools and you're going to go ahead and call this your period number, underscore your last name, underscore text, and hit save. Then you're going to do file, save as, and we're going to change the format of it. Oops, we're not by doing save as though. Um, uh, maybe it's export. There we go. And make it a PDF file. And the PDF file, once you hit export, that's the one that you're going to upload to your Google Drive. Um, because PDFs are viewable on every computer as long as you have the plugin or the reader. Whereas if you want to view an InDesign file, you actually have to make sure that you have the program and it is an expensive program. So the PDF is going to be the one that you upload to your Google site. So here is the InDesign. This one here is just showing me that it's open, okay? If I actually close it, that one disappears. There is the PDF. And if I double click on the PDF, it's gonna open it in Adobe Reader. And there is the one page document that we created.